Hi, it's Chris Jabberzini with KNAC.com, and I am here with Lawn Friend. Hi. Don't be a hater. She says she hates being in front of the camera. Don't be a hater about anything. We have too much hate in this world. Look at our presidential race. Stop being a hater. It's good to be here. I do not like very much being in front of the camera. <laughs> That's better. I'm. How about I'm uncomfortable? Indeed, indeed. Use your words. Take it from a writer. Words are important. Yes, they are. Okay, so you are the original editor-in-chief of KNAC.com. I was. 1999, I was hired by the great Bob Ezrin, producer of all the great Alice Cooper Kiss and Kiss records in The Wall and Peter Gabriel's debut. And he and Rob... together a bunch of people like Long Paul and we just sat in a studio in Santa Monica with this open space and we streamed 24-7 hard rock music we had another site called Groove Radio which is still alive and very healthy and um, that was an amazing time and I, I, I was like doing what I did for RIP magazine but in a new medium, in a new context. So I came back from a long time in the music business and some oblivion and odd jobs. And then uh, I had that gig and I really enjoyed it. We went to Europe. In my second book, Sweet Demotion, me and Rob and his, and his former wife, Stephanie, we went over and chronicled three weeks in Europe and went to the Rock and Park Festival and that was a truly great experience because what happened during that time was we watched Rob sit on his laptop at night after I had done interviews during the day with any number of great artists. Corn was over there and Rage Against the Machine. Um, Kitty, I remember interviewing. One Minute Silence. A lot of acts from the late nine from that late nineties, early two thousand period. Oh, and Slipknot. I mean. Slipknot, that they were like playing one of their first shows in Europe, and I get taken on the bus to, to they want to meet you because they're a Rip Magazine fans. So I go on the bus, and all of them like drop to their knees like Wayne's World, and I'm going, "What the fuck are you doing? You don't understand. We grew up in Iowa. We had nothing but Rip Magazine, and I was flattered." So that was a great time, and I owe that I owe that time to uh, the rebirth of sort of my rock journalism uh, to KNAC.com. So it's nice to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that also. Um, you're one of my favorite journalists and writers on the planet. I really appreciate you, and I'm sure you hear that. I will not call him a legend because... Because I'm still alive, and I haven't done anything that, that deserves the legendary status. I... I, I have other stuff I need to do before I'm a legend. It's probably Legends arguable. They're dying now, and they deserve their status. I've lost a half a dozen in the last couple of months, so not both personally and sort of professionally. There are souls departing that gave me so much music over the course of my life, and when they leave, it's like you get a body blow to the gut. It, it really was... Lemmy and Bowie and Glenn Fry, those three in a row messed messed me up. <clears throat> First I grieved and then I tried to dance. Yeah, we have to keep dancing, right? So you have a dance. Okay. Um, you have that was good. <laughs> you have um, a couple of books out and uh, well, one one Life on Planet Rock came out. Tenth anniversary will be July, so it's been out for a decade. It's out of print for about four years. You can find it used and d buy it that way because it's cheap. And then you, something about used books is that they were owned by somebody else and that person, for some reason, was drawn to that. So I think there's a certain energy attached to a used book that maybe somebody passed some vibration into those pages and you're meant to read it. So get it used. My second book, Sweet Demotion, was self-published, and you can get them both digital. They're really cheap digital, Amazon. But I don't promote my books. I don't sell them myself. Like maybe I'll do a book signing every few months. Sweet Demotion was a heavy, 500-page, intimate, midlife 
What the fuck happened to me? Memoir. I called it the Eat, Pray, Love, Rock ver- chapter in my life. <laughs> and it ends with a very revealing uh, long chapter on Steven Tyler. And I-, I rewrote the first half of his book, um, Does the Noise in My Head Bother You, just before he went into rehab. And that was just an amazing, heavy time. So, yeah. The third book, I don't know, keeps changing. I started a novel, and then I started a third memoir. But I didn't like the title because it was, like, really kind of despairing. So now I'm now I'm just taking road trips to see what comes. Like coming to NAM to work for my friend Lisa S. Johnson, who published this extraordinary book called 108 Rockstar Guitars, a pictorial coffee table where... She spent 15 years putting together this book. I worked for her last year. And the artists that are in the book, you saw me just hug Vernon Reed in the hall because there's a great photo, there are great shots of his guitar. And this last year I did this for her. We got a bunch of them. And then she puts these interviews on her website. And when you ask a guitar player about his guitar, not about how's the tour going or what are you promoting or when they're not selling anything then you get to the soul and you really get to what embodies why they do what they do and i just sat with steve Vai for 10 minutes and in 10 minutes he described 35 years ago that first guitar and a lot of these guys who are now iconic figures they built their own first guitars which makes that scene in or Jack White and it might get loud is building his that guitar but it's these guys they have this reverence for their instruments and then some of them build catalogs and museums Rick Nielsen he has a museum of guitars and not being a musician it's always been the unique for me like what what business do I have talking to musicians about their instruments because I'm not a scientist and I don't understand it and I can't play anything. My father's a piano player, could play everything. I can't, but I get it from a different place and that's why I try to pass on to fans what's going through the artist and how they their creative process brings these riffs and these words and these melodies to life and why we're fans. We're united by that, why we're fans. So speaking of your book, what? What is the title that you're not really liking very much? Well, it's not going to be the title, but it started as Diary of a Sad Man in Search of a Happy Ending. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> and the sad man is like Ozzy's Madman, only it's sad man, one word. But it's, I'm not going to do it because I would like to manifest some positive shit this year. It's hard living in the desert, working freelance. Hey, will you write our bio? How much do you can you pay the dollar a word? What? We can give you fifty dollars. I'm sorry, dude. I'm gonna have to pass. But good luck with your shit. <laughs> well, there you have it. We have Lawn Friend here at the 2016 Nam Show. Thank you so much for coming out. Let me just say to all the fans who come up to me in the hall every year, because I've been coming to this since 1988. It's my 28th year. The first NAM I did was I had RIP girls, girls in RIP t-shirts. We had a booth. We had magazines. We had the Joe Elliott cover where he does this on the cover, blown up really big. And I'd send the girls out into the hall to bring back rockers so we get pictures. And that convention helped image us as cool because who came to our booth in 88 james hetfield lars ulrich tommy lee tico torres joe satriani lita ford i have pictures like wait and this wasn't the digital age no selfies i had like this throwaway camera and no budget to like have pros because it was just the first year year and a half of rip but this convention since that day And then, of course, going back to my room with James and throwing water balloons on the fans below. They were, before they became gods, Metallica were just regular guys who liked to drink beer and Jägermeister and have a good time. I don't even drink. So I'm just here having a good time floating around. And those fans mean a lot when they come up and they say, hey, dude, and they shake my hand, you know. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for talking to me. and You followed me quite a distance, too, coming out here. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.